let's learn about the role of units and unit prefixes when doing conversions. By the end of this video, you'll be able to convert the speed of a car in kilometers per hour to its speed in meters per second. But first, let's look at these two beakers. Which beaker has the greatest volume of water? The beakers do, in fact, have the same volume. This volume is just reported in two different ways. Let's investigate. We can prove to ourselves that 350 milliliters and 0 0.350 liters are the same volume pretty easily. One liter of something is equivalent to 1,000 milliliters of that something. These are two different ways to describe the same thing. In other words, one liter equals 1,000 milliliters. In this beaker, we have 350 milliliters. Let's determine its volume in liters using what we know about the relationship between milliliters and liters. As we said, one liter is defined as 1,000 milliliters, which means that they are equal. We'll start by writing 350 milliliters. That is what we are studying, the thing about which we want information. If we were to add or subtract from this value, we would change it and it would no longer be the 350 milliliters that we want to study. What we can do is multiply it by one and it will not change. But remember, we have already discussed that one liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters, and so the ratio one liter to 1,000 milliliters is equal to one. So we'll multiply 350 milliliters by one liter over 1,000 milliliters. Notice, milliliters is on the top and bottom, which means that we can cancel out the milliliter units, which leaves us with 350 times 1 over 1,000 liters, which is equal to 0 0.350 liters. And there we have it. We've just proven that the two beakers do, in fact, contain the same amount of water. As an aside, letters like M are SI prefixes. These SI prefixes allow us to change the way a value is expressed, as we just did with the water in the beakers. This table contains the common SI prefixes, which you should familiarize yourself with. Here we see the prefix milli, which denotes a multiple of one one thousandth, as we just saw with our beakers. Both beakers have the same amount of water, we just express their volumes in different magnitudes. Let's say we have 68 million joules of energy. This is a big number, so it may make more sense for us to express this value in megajoules. Use the SI prefixes to represent 68 million joules in megajoules. We'll start with the 68 million joules. That's what we're studying. Our table tells us that anything with the mega prefix is a multiple of 1 million. This means that there are 1 million joules per 1 megajoule. Now be careful, there are two different ways we might try to write this conversion. Notice here that the joules are in the top and bottom, and so they cancel out. This one's correct. Here, on the other hand, joules are in the top twice, and so they do not cancel out. So that's not right. It's important to always include units throughout all of your work. That will save you from making these mistakes. We see that 68 million joules is equivalent to 68 megajoules. Let's try a more complex conversion. We have a sample of gold with volume 4,780 microliters, and we want to convert this to centiliters. Some people might try to look for a single step conversion, but the easiest way to do this, and the way that will be least likely to result in a mistake, is to do it stepwise. We'll first convert microliters to liters, and then from liters to centiliters using two separate conversion steps. We start with the thing we're studying, 4,780 microliters. We see from the table that micro means one million. Which of the following is a correct conversion factor for microliters and liters? Two of these are correct. One liter is equal to 10 to the sixth microliters. There are many small things, microliters, in one big thing, liter. But it is also true that one little thing, one microliter, is a small portion of one large thing, liter. Both of these are equivalent. So we multiply our 4,780 microliters by one liter, one big thing, over 10 to the sixth microliters, many small things. Don't reach for your calculator just yet. Let's cancel out our units. Here, the microliters in the top and bottom cancel. And if we were to do the arithmetic, we would get an answer in liters. But we don't want liters, we want centiliters, so we won't stop just yet. Which of the following is a correct conversion factor for liters and centiliters? We'll continue our dimensional analysis by multiplying what we have by the conversion of 10 to the second centiliters, 100 small things, over 1 liter, in one big thing. The liters cancel out, and the only units left are centiliters. Now multiply through the top and divide by the bottom, and you get 0 0.478 centiliters. What's great about this approach is that you can keep on going. You can keep multiplying by conversion factors, meaning by 1, and the only thing that will change are the units. What if we wanted to know how much this volume of gold would cost? Recently, the cost of gold was $11,000 per centiliter. In other words, 
$11,000 equals one centiliter for gold. Multiplying through by this conversion factor, we get that our 4,780 microliters of gold is worth $5,258. Not bad for something the size of your finger. The important things to remember are, one, you can multiply by one as many times as you need as long as you're careful with canceling out the units. And two, wait until the units are what you want and then do the calculations. We'll use the density of ethanol in kilograms per meter cubed for the next example. The density of ethanol is 785.1 kilograms per meter cubed. Let's work together to convert this density to grams per milliliter. We're given that one meter cubed is equal to 1,000 liters, so we'll start with that conversion. The meters cubed cancel out, and now we have liters, but we want the volume to be expressed in milliliters. From the earlier problem and the table, we know that there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter, so we'll do that conversion next. Our goal was to express the volume in milliliters, which we've just done. However, we still haven't converted the mass from kilograms to grams. From the table, we know that any unit with a kilo prefix means that the multiple is 1,000. This means that, in every kilogram, there are 1,000 grams. Now we can convert the mass from kilograms to grams. These units will cancel out and will be left with grams per milliliter, as was our goal. Although it took a few steps this time, the density of ethanol is still the same. We just expressed it in two different ways. In the beginning of the video, we mentioned a car traveling at a constant speed of 90 kilometers per hour. You should now be able to convert the car's speed from kilometers per hour to meters per second. What is it? Now let's do this problem together. We're given that the car is traveling at a constant speed of 90 kilometers per hour, so we'll start with that. Let's first convert kilometers to meters. We know from our table that there are 1,000 meters per kilometer, so we'll write that down. The kilometers cancel out and we're left with just meters, which was our goal. Our overall units are now meters per hour, but we want meters per second, so we can't stop there. We know that in every hour there are 60 minutes, so we'll do that conversion next. The hours will cancel out and we're left with minutes, but we're still not done. We need to convert the minutes to seconds. We know that for every minute there are 60 seconds, which is our last conversion. The minutes will cancel out and we'll be left with seconds. Overall, our units are now meters per second, which was our goal. We've just found that a car traveling at a constant speed of 90 kilometers per hour is going the same speed as a car traveling at a constant speed of 25 meters per second.